वक्रतुंडमहाकाय सूर्यकोटिसम प्रभ निर्विघ्न कुर मे देव सर्वकार्यु सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरधे कामिनी विद्यारंभ क्या सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरसाक्षात्म ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम ओ सहना ओमात्मे नम श्रीपरमात्मे नम अथ चतुर्थोध्या चतुर्थोध्यावाच श्री भगवाच ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मापण ब्रह्म हवि ब्रह्मा ब्रह्म नाहुत ब्रह्मा ब्रह्म नाहुत ब्रह्म ते न गंतव्यम ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना ब्रह्म कर्म सधीना another important uh, shloka which we are seeing everything is brahma <coughs> so all the karakas are brahma all the factors of action involved in 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 in, in an action or the action which are accomplished by the factors all the factors they are brahma the main factor karta karta is brahma the one who has vision of everything in brahma he gains brahma brahma vitte brahma eva bhavati that is the the meaning brahma vitte brahma eva bhavati brahma vitte shokam tarati he crosses over this saro sam saro of samsara samsara which is saro which is dukkha roopa dukkha roopa samsaram adi gachati so therefore the entire jagat entire jagat is brahma the jagat brahma which is not separate from me therefore it is not a threat anymore there is no dvaita dvaita buddhi So the jagat is jagat karanam brahma ishvar ha and therefore agam asmi all the karakas are agam my interaction with the jagat my interaction with the, the jagat which happen through all the karakas and the, all the karakas are brahma so therefore everything is brahma the so all the karakas are then the transactions are the the tra- transaction reality that is what we say which is mithya it has got transactional reality it has got only transaction reality not paramarthika reality so it is mithya brahma is satyam brahma satyam jagat mithya that is what the the saramsha is essence is so what is involved is knowledge so knowledge knowledge alone is involved here 
Whereas when a person realizes the fact, Agam Brahmasmi, it is knowledge. It is not Upasana. So Upasana we were discussing, deliberate superimposition, that is Upasana. Linge, Linga, it is Linga. Before Shiva is invoked in it, it is just a Linga, just a stone. Linge, Maheshwara Arohana. Superimposing Shiva, Lord Shiva in the Linga. Or Salagrame Vishnu, Arohpunam. Superimposing the, the Lord Vishnu in the Salagrama. Salagrama, Salagrama stone. It is considered to be auspicious. So, therefore, invoking Narayana in that. They have deliberate superimposition. That is what is called Upasana. In fact, this is what in the temple also. Temple, we see all the murtis. The murtis, before the Lord is invoked, it is just a murti, it's an idol. But after, after the avagaram, it is not an idol. That's the difference. It becomes a vigraha. Vigraha meaning murti. Murti vigraha. Vigraha is, the word we use vigraha, in both sense, Vigraha is after invoking the Lord, it becomes Vigraha Anudraha Murti. Before, it is just an idol. So, idol, that's why we don't use the word idol, not idol worship or idol. We don't look upon the stone statue as just a statue. If you look upon a statue as a statue, it is idol. It doesn't deserve worship. It is just a statue made of stone. But once it is, once it is, kept in the temple and Lord is invoked in that, it is not an idol anymore. We give a, we given a, a, a reality to it. It is deliberate superimposition. That is Upasana. That is Upasana. Upasana, therefore Upasana is deliberate superimposition. But here, to be superimposed Brahma on everything, Karta is Brahma. Is it superimposition? Is it deliberate superimposition? Karma, the object is Brahma, Karana, other Karkas, Sampradana, Apadana, Adikana, all these are Brahma, we say. Is it uh, like Upasana? Is it deliberate superimposition? No, it is not superimposition. It is not Upasana. It is knowledge. Therefore, what is involved here is only knowledge. It is knowledge. It is a, it is a truth. It is the, it is Satyam. It is a truth. It is a reality. Here in this shloka, knowledge alone is involved. The ritual being performed by the one, the Echamana, who sees Brahma in all actions, Brahma, Karma, Samadhi, Samadhi is Buddhi, Samyak, Adiyate. Seeing Brahma, everything is Brahma, Karma, Samadhi. You have a vision of everything as Brahma, who sees Brahma in everything, in all actions, and he performs the ritual. Therefore, in all actions, he sees Brahma. So, it is not Upasana, it is knowledge. Because one may contend saying that this is Upasana because ritual is involved. So karma, karma kanda, upasana kanda, therefore this is Upasana. There is no knowledge here, only content, but it is it is not true. That is why we say it is knowledge. It is not Upasana. It is not Brahma is deliberately superimposed on all the Karagas. All the, the Karagas, if we analyze, it will resolve to Brahma alone. Karagas are Nitya. Karta is mitya, karana is mitya, karma is mitya. The truth of all the karaka is Brahma. How can one see Brahma everywhere? If one goes around with the eyes wide open, will Brahma be seen in everything? When a chair is seen, do you go beyond the chair and see Brahma? Seeing Brahma is not like looking at a shirt or seeing the cloth. When you see a shirt, you see only the shirt. Obviously, you don't, then you don't see Brahma in this way. In fact, you will not see Brahma because you are Brahma. Brahma is not an object which can be seen with the eyes. Eyes are the Brahmana. Eyes are the Brahmana in knowing the, in knowing the shape or the color of the object. What shape Brahma is or what color Brahma is. So you are Brahma. What is your color? You means not the Sharira. Sharira is not, Shariram is you but you are not the Shariram. 
because you exist without Shariram. That in Sushupti Avastha, you exist without Shariram. You don't have Sharia Avimana. Therefore, you cannot say, I am this body, mind, sense complex. You are, but you are not confined, but you are not that alone. You are not confined by that body, mind, sense alone all the time. In Sushupti itself, you are not. You you are not you don't have identification Abhimana with the Shaina Sangata. Therefore, the, you cannot say the body is me. We cannot say this. I am the body. Body is you, but I am not the body. I mean, I am I am above the body. Body is me. It is I own the body, but it is not me. Like I own the shirt. I own the, the I own the the car. So my body is worn, but. You are not the body. Similarly, the Brahma is not an object which can be available for other Brahmana. You cannot see. See means not with the physical eyes. You cannot see because it is a very subject. The thought that object objectifies a chair is Brahma. The Vritti. Vritti is Jada. Vritti also Jada only, inert only. Vritti, the thoughts. Thoughts are illumined by what? Chaitanya. That is Brahma. There is a vritti in the buddhi, in the mind. There is a chair vritti. There is a gutta vritti, pot vritti, pata vritti, cloth, mat, mata vritti, pata vritti, cloth vritti. All these are the thought. The thought comes and go. Thoughts are jada, but the thoughts are illumined by Chaitanyam. So, when an object comes to your consciousness, it is not just an object. It is object plus Consciousness. It is object consciousness. Minus consciousness, object cannot be, cannot come to consciousness. In the absence of object, consciousness continues. But consciousness cannot be recognized as consciousness, like an object, because objects are not along with the object, consciousness has to be consciousness. Consciousness is 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 recognized. Because consciousness is you. It is not an object. So when a thought is there, the thought implies the thought that along with the thought there is consciousness, that both that consciousness is, is you. So you can recognize consciousness along with the thought. Without thought, along with the thought, only thought, consciousness can be recognized. With no thought, no thoughtless. There is no thoughtless condition. So thoughtless is it is only in this sleep. In the sleep, you are not available thoughtless or in samadhi, samadhi avastha. Samadhi avastha, thoughtless state is there, but thoughtlessness also known to you, known, known to the person who, who is in samadhi. After samadhi, he recollects. It was a thoughtless state. Like in Sushupti, I had a dream, I had a sleep, nice sleep. I had jidra sukhen anubhuyate. It was an happy sleep, deep sleep. I don't know anything, I was, I was completely happy. That thought is there. The thought is that it was sukshma. So, so therefore, that thought, thought also eliminated by Chaitanya. So, all the thought comes to awareness only because of the awareness. So, awareness is you. How can you objectify the awareness? Therefore, seeing is not physical seeing. That's why it says here, you don't see Brahma in this way, like you see a shirt or like you see the cloth. You will not see Brahma because you are Brahma. The thought that object, objectifies a chair. That is Brahma. The space in which the chair is sitting, it's Brahma. And the chair itself, every particle of it is nothing but Brahma. Everything is Brahma. Chair as an object available for your cognition. When you open your eyes, it's available for your perception, cognition. How? Oh, because the thought is blessed by Chaitanya. Therefore, that there is a chair thought in the buddhi. Which is blessed by consciousness, that is you. So, along with the chair thought, consciousness, and if there is no chair, consciousness also will go away. It's like throwing the baby along the bath water. No, consciousness will continue to my other thought will come. Cloth thought, gata, gata vritti, pata vritti, mata vritti, so many other thoughts will come. But in between the thoughts, what is that? that consciousness, that is what in Vedantic meditation we do. That space between the two thoughts. It's a very, that space, that is, it is, a, that that space is so minute. 
focus on the on the on the thoughtless. That's what we do in Vedantic meditation, focusing on focusing the thought, focusing your attention between the thoughts. In there, the thoughtless, it just you are, you alone is present. The object of any thought, yes, the object of any thought is non separate from consciousness. That is Brahma. The object of any thought, every vritti has an object. Therefore, only vritti. Vritti means it has got corresponding object. Gata vritti, vritti, thought is there. Thought about what? The gata, the pot. That is not separate from consciousness. That is Brahma. And the knowledge of the object, gata, the thought itself is also not separate from this consciousness. Gata cannot exist. The gata vritti cannot exist without consciousness. It is not separate from consciousness. The one who knows, who has a knowledge of the object, is also nothing but consciousness. He is consciousness. He is a knower, the knower of the object, knowledge, who is a knower of the, who is the knower, who is the aware, who has the knowledge of the object. The object is consciousness. The object thought, the thought of the object, that vibhuti, not separate from consciousness. It is consciousness. Therefore, the knower, the jnata, the knowledge, the knower, the one who knows that, who knows the gata, the pot, and the knowledge, that gata jnana, and the object of knowledge, the gata, all are brahma. In every perception, the three things are involved. In every, every uh, transaction, every transaction, the, these three things are involved. Knower, knowledge, and the object of knowledge. So the knower is Chaitanya. And the knowledge is Chaitanya. And the object of knowledge is, that is also Chaitanya. The object of knowledge, the object of knowledge, Gata. Gataha Asti. Asti, from where the come Asti from? The Isness. Isness is Brahma, Chaitanya. And that, in the form of a thought, the knowledge appears in the buddhi, Chaitanya. And the aware, the knower, he is Chaitanya. So, therefore, it is the Chaitanya which knows the Chaitanya in the form of Chaitanya. It's only Chaitanya. Because of Nama Rupa, the different names are given. Knower, knowledge, and object of knowledge. And all of Brahman, consciousness, the Satyam. Therefore, it is a transaction between Chaitanya. Therefore, Chaitanya Brahma alone transacts with Brahma. It is only Brahma transacting with itself, Brahma. But in the Vyavaharika, the trans because the transaction is there, therefore different Nama, different Rupas are in different forms and different Rupas in different form and different Rupas are available. Therefore, there seems to be the there seems to be the there seems to be the differentiation. That's there, there seems to be the difference. And therefore, the transaction is considered to be the yeah, is real. Really, the transaction is mitya. How can Brahma transact with Brahma? Everything is Brahma. What? How can Brahma do any any transaction? So, blessed by Brahma, the transaction happens. Therefore, the knower, the knowledge, and object of knowledge, everything is Brahma. So that is why this person mitya. That is why we say mitya. Mitya, the word is important. We are not dismissing it. It has got Vyavaharika Sattva, transactional reality is uh, the for mitya. Mitya is mitya, 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 mitya meaning mitya doesn't exist. Mitya is is not independent of Sat Brahma. Satyam exists. Satyam is that is that alone exists, that is the truth. Nothing else exists. So what exists is alone, Brahma alone. Therefore, only we say, Sarvam Kalavidam Brahma, everything is Ishvara. For the sake of transaction, Bhagavan, Bhagavan had created, Bhagavan had created a notion that also Bhagavan created it is because of our Ajnana, the Srishti, 
because our karma because our karma jiva karma the srishti is and therefore as a jiva takes the takes himself to it takes himself to be confined to this sharira mana sangata and therefore so therefore that arises the subject and because subject is there, therefore object only when subject is there there is object and other karakas when subject itself is not there that is why karta is attacked first not the other karakas what is the reality of the karta if you analyze and discover the truth of the nature of karta all the other karakas fall apart that is what the shloka says so therefore all the other karaka the nature of the truth of the knower is brahma when knower is brahma what about knowledge and the object of knowledge they are all brahma chaitanya meva that is satyam that's why brahma satyam jagat mithya that is the essence of this shloka thus the statement aham brahma asmi means atma is brahma aham atma brahma which is nirvikalpa doesn't undergo any change nirvikalpa which doesn't have the, this the veda the knower knowledge known that that's a nirvikalpa nirvikalpa is the differentiation which doesn't have knower knowledge no distinction triputi triputi bheda nyatra gnanam and gnaya bheda nyata the knower gnanam the knowledge gnaya the object of knowledge so knowledge can happen only when there is a bheda only when there is a difference the three fold difference is triputi bheda nirvikalpa doesn't mean absence of thought but point to the non difference between the knower the knowledge and known the nirvikalpa samadhi nirvikalpa samadhi means that there is a recognition of the truth appreciation of the truth the the truth being the, the non difference non difference between these three knower knowledge and known which are taken to be real in vyavaharika in that avastha it is it, it is seen as not different yes non difference they are non different because knowledge is myself knowledge cannot exist apart from the knower where the knowledge is located where the knowledge, where the knowledge is, what is the ashraya what is the ashraya what is the location locus of knowledge it is in me therefore knowledge is myself the knower is myself and the object of knowledge also myself is seen these three are apparently different that is what mithya is apparently difference apparent differences apparent differences mithya they are apparently different therefore only there is a transaction transaction is only also apparent only not real transaction just to say i am nirvikalpa is to refer to the fact that I, that there is no real difference between the knower knowledge and the known this knowledge is always nirvikalpa so this gnanam is nirvikalpa gnanam there being no second thing there is no another thing second thing whether you know it or not this knowledge is always is there similarly when you see the seer the sight and the seen it are knower known and the knowledge similarly seer sight in the seen alor brahma similarly here my when you hear i am the hearer i hear the sound and the object of hearing the object of knowledge the sound from that it comes the object hearing hearing hear and hearer and the heard everything is brahma so similarly with regard to all these sense perception everything is brahma the vyavaharika it is it is seems to be different therefore only vyavaharika that is why it is mithya apparently different that vyavaharika is when it comes from the sand point of paramatika it is mithya mithya doesn't mean tucham mithya doesn't mean doesn't exist it exists but not independently like the pot doesn't exist apart from place similarly this mithya jagat doesn't exist apart from brahma everything is brahma as part is clay similarly this jagat is clay as part as transactional reality similarly this jagat also as transactional reality that is the vision thus being in any situation is seeing brahma everywhere sarvatra brahma darshanam that is brahma buddhi this is brahma buddhi 
Sarvatra Dharma Darshanam, Dharma Buddhi. This person has knowledge, therefore he has a vision of Brahma, everything he sees as Brahma. Sarvatra Dharma Darshanam. It is not a matter of opening one's eyes and trying to see Brahma. Brahma is not an object to be seen with the eyes. To see Brahma everywhere is to recognize the fact that the knower, the jnata, aham, Brahma, the knowledge, jnana is Brahma, and what is known, nyaya, that is Brahma. All the three are Brahma. But Brahma is independent of all of them, important. This equation, this uh, statement to be understood, all three are Brahma, but Brahma is not. Brahma is independent of all of them. The ninth chapter of the one says the same idea. This as a cryptic shloka in the ninth chapter. This the karma ne karma yaspashet. We saw that is a cryptic shloka. Similarly, the ninth chapter also there is a cryptic shloka. Matstani sarabhutani nachagam teshu vasitaha nachavastani bhutani. It is next shloka. It says we'll see that. So therefore, everything is Brahma. Brahma is independent of everything. Clay is independent of pot. Clay exists in spite of pot. Pot doesn't exist, but clay will exist. But pot cannot exist without clay. Similarly, all are Brahma. They exist, not independently. They as they ex their existence dependent is as, as dependency on Brahma. And Brahma is independent of all of them. Therefore, Jnata is Brahma, knowledge is Brahma, Nyayam is Brahma. But Brahma is not any of this. Everything is independent of all of them. Seeing Brahma everywhere is knowledge. Brahma, Brahma Darshanam, Sarvatra Brahma Darshanam is, that is what Jnanam is, Brahma Buddhi. Brahma Karma Samadhi na. That is Brahma Karma Samadhi. In fact, all the three, knower, knowledge and the known, can be shaken off. They can be removed. And they can return to be removed again and you have them you remove them you have them and remove them and all the while Brahma always is if you analyze the knower knowledge and the known the nature of it will result to Brahma alone and the one who has this knowledge who sees Brahma everywhere is called Brahma Karma Samadhi referring to the person Brahma Karma Samadhi here refers to a person who has a buddhi Samadhi means here buddhi that appreciates everything uh, is Brahma. Brahma eva karma. Brahma alone is the karma. Karakas, the form of the karakas, which are required for accomplishing an action. Karaka means kriyanvayi karakam, the factors of action. So Brahma eva karma. Karma involves karaka. So Brahma eva karma. The one who has this buddhi, the knowledge, the appreciation, is called Brahma karma samadhi. So, Brahma Karma Samadhi, Brahma Karma Samahita Buddhi, Samyak Ahita Buddhi. Brahma Karmani, Brahma, Brahma Eva Karma, Brahma Karma, Brahma Karmani Samadhi, Samahita Buddhi, yes, yes, aha. That person is Brahma Karma Samadhi. Brahma Karma Samadhi, na, Tritya Bhakti, by the person who has the vision of that everything is Brahma, by that person, Brahma Eva. He reaches Brahma alone. What is to be gained by that person? Brahma Karma Samadhi. Who sees Brahma in all action? What is to be gained by that person when everything is Brahma? Nothing except Brahma. Brahma Yavatera Gantavyam. He reaches Brahma. He knows Brahma. Therefore, he recognizes Brahma. Therefore, Brahma, Brahma Yavatera Gantavyam. Gantavyam, the recognition, the knowledge. If everything is Brahma, what result can be there? If doer is Brahma, the done is Brahma, the doing is Brahma. And the reason for doing it also Brahma, that is Sampradhana. Where is the result? For whom is the result? For what purpose is the result? Knowing that everything is Brahma, the jnani who is engaged in activity, he performs action for the sake of people. Loka Sangharhartam. Even though there is nothing for the wise person to accomplish, his time is available for helping people. The jnani doesn't require anything to be secure or happy. Therefore, his time is no longer required for himself. Whatever time is left in the person's life, part of the karma is there, can therefore be given to the people for them to make use of as best as they can. That is why jnani teaches the Brahma 
this Brahma Karma Samadhi, the person who has his knowledge, the vision of Brahma, his life for the his life is meant for Loka Sangrahartam, only for the welfare of the people. So the result is Brahma. The one who has the vision of everything Brahma, the end result is Brahma. Brahma meaning he doesn't he doesn't have to work anymore for gaining security or happiness. He discovers that the very meaning of security appears to be himself. That is Brahma Yvatanagantabhyam. There is no moksha. Moksha is gained. Moksha is not going to any other loka. Moksha is gained here, here itself, Igayeva, by his vision of this Advaita Darshana, Brahma Darshana. So Brahma Yvatanagantabhyam, that is the, the meaning. When there is no transaction, then the jnani doesn't act to any action. No karma. No karma means therefore no karaka. You come back to yourself. What kind of self do you to, do you come back to? Not the oh this taraf is corrupted. Even if the jnani doesn't talk, sorry. Even if the jnani doesn't talk, people can go and sit with him and they, as they did with Ramana Magarji. The presence of the jnani itself is a blessing. Ramana Magarji doesn't talk much. But still people go and sit because they find some solace. They find the peace, what he has. The people also enjoy. He did not talk much and would speak only a few words now and then. This is also a type of teaching, a quiet teaching. When you sit with someone who sits quietly, happily, you also become quiet. This this silence, this, this the... The, the serenity, the happiness, what you see in the jnani, it is contagious. Whoever comes in contact with that, they also enjoy that, at least as long as they are in the vicinity of the jnani. That place becomes an ashram. So people who come there, they get benefited. They come there for solace. They come there not for gaining and they just want to sit quietly and to enjoy the, the happiness. The inherent happiness, which is oneself. So you also become quiet. Your mind becomes quiet. Your mind all, all the time, it was, it was in turbulence. Now, when you come and sit at the feet of a jnani, it becomes quiet because you have come back to yourself. That's why Kshetra, Kshetra, the pilgrimage centers, and jnani who lives, that itself becomes a center, center of pilgrimage. People go to pilgrimage centers, pilgrims, Pilgrimage centers, pilgrims go for what purpose? To en to enjoy this, this this happiness, the peace. And wherever jnani lives, that place the place becomes a tirtha. So therefore, people go and bathe with the tirtha. So what else can you do when the person you are sitting with who doesn't talk? When there is no tra transaction, you come back to yourself. What kind of self do you come back to? Not the historical self. Because the person you are sitting with is all silence. He doesn't even blink. He just absorbed in himself. The situation naturally takes you back to yourself. This is not enlightenment. It is only experiential. Yes. It is not enlightenment. People mistake it for enlightenment. But it is, it is experiential. Some happiness, some solace they find is experiential. There is some shanti, some peace, some contentment. People like this experience and therefore they seek it out. Therefore, only people go to Trivanamalik or the Tirtha because they want the Shanti. But the Shanti is not knowledge. It is experiential, which is not knowledge. For knowledge, there is one more step. You have to become a, a Jignasu. From being a Mumukshu, you should be a Mumukshu first and then, and then become a Jignasu. Because Moksha is only by knowledge. You become a Jignasu. So Jignasa means you will naturally have to approach the teacher who comes under the Sampradaya and therefore teaching, Shavanam, etc. People like this explain, therefore they seek it out. But afterwards, the Shanti is gone. The moment they leave the place, the Shanti is gone. It is only something they can remember and talk about. Just like when they come out of a movie and talk about how enjoyable it was. This vast aspect of experience is there because there is no enlightenment. 
experience itself is something you can only recall and interpret in your own way still the person who gives shanti to some people is helping them therefore it is certainly better than giving them excitement therefore the life of a gyani is a blessing because some some help is then some people are benefited coming back to yourself is better than excitement the rock musician gives people excitement for which they pay money you sit with the gyani and you're happy and yani doesn't demand money at least here the shanti is free excitement may provide some release for pent up emotions but coming back to yourself is even better the wise person chooses the latter so coming back to yourself is better than the excitement for excitement we pay uh, and for this it is available where agnani is and it is beautiful as well thus agnani who can give you some shanti is performing action for the sake of people what action performs by not talking silence and there are some gyanis who talk that is that is teaching teacher discourse this is exactly what ramana did hundreds of people used to go and sit with him a few of course were disappointed when they realized that he would not talk but a lot of other people enjoy the peace and silence therefore a gyani may be performing a variety of activities for the sake of people or he may just sit quietly an activity that also helps people so this is a example for that it's just quite sits quietly and that helps the people in reality however whatever is done or not done is still a karma eva gyani doing karma is a karma gyani sitting quietly is also a karma because of gyanam katrutva abhimana not there because of because is a gyani so katrutva abhavat therefore a karma eva it is not an action or an activity because uh, all actions all karmas have been nullified by the knowledge the knowledge of brahma whatever an actor does on stage he knows that he is not the role and the role is himself this is a good example he is not the role the role is himself he is he sees it very clearly the beggar is the actor but actor is not the beggar the knower knowledge and the known is brahma but brahma is independent of them this is a good example to understand the act, the actor is the beggar is the actor but actor is not the beggar beggar is the actor is independent of the beggar so therefore actor knows that he is not the role in the green dream the room he knows and the role is himself he sees very clearly because of his knowledge that the action he performs is mithya so to the wise person knows i am not the role i am satyam and the role is mithya the role is me but i am not the role the role is mithya while act, all actions come only from the person he knows that his nature is mithya this being understood he performs no action in reality that is why krishna karma krutu he has done that is to be done there is knowledge he has gained therefore there is nothing else to be done therefore it doesn't perform any action chaha buddhiman karmani karmani akarma yaha pashyet akarmani cha karma yaha sa buddhiman manushyeshu in this shloka which is unfolding this vision through a ritual a yagna the karma karma is converted into now akarma all the karakas are dharma mean then the, the person has a vision of everything being brahma all the karakas bring them therefore karma is converted into akarma do doing there is no karma all karakas being nothing but brahma in this way the karakas are nullified badita karaka upamardanam is say they no longer exist for agnani when one knows that everything is brahma doership is gone and the doership is gone there is no real karma anymore because karma implies a primary factor primary karaka karta karta is gone when karta is gone all the other karakas falls up, fall apart therefore in answer to the question how can one see akarma and karma karma is completely negated here and only brahma remains for that to be karma there must be karta who is different from the kriya the action who performs the kriya through the karana the means of action for a given purpose sampradana there also will be a karma phala a result and the person is bound by that karma however when the akankara itself the, the one who performs the action is resolved the akankara becomes identical with brahma the akankara is bajita akankara it is burnt akankara it is enlightened ego but brahma is free from the akankara 
here one could get confused in the following manner and think that if Ahankara is Brahma and Brahma is not Ahankara, all that has happened is that the Ahankara has gained a new name. Before it was ego, just ego, bloated ego. Now it has become enlightened ego. Ahankara becomes a synonym for Brahma. I thought of myself as an ego, Ahankara, the doer. Now I come to know that the doer is also Brahma. So if the doer is Brahma, and Brahma is not the doer, therefore the doer gains a new name now. There is nothing more to it than that. It is not so. It is not so. Here, the doer is Brahma, doing is Brahma, everything is Brahma, whereas Brahma is free from all of them. That is important. From this we understand that is that there is a karma in the karma itself, and karma itself is negated, bhadita. Therefore, this shoka unfolds the vision of Atma. Therefore, the doer doesn't get a new name. Karma is bhadita. Karma not there, where is karta? Giving up karma by knowledge, negating it, that is called jnana karma sannyasa, which is the title of this chapter, fourth chapter, the third chapter, karma sannyasa. This is jnana karma sannyasa. Though doing, the person still doesn't do. For doing, the person doesn't do. Neva kinchit karoti, kurvanapi na karoti. I think we'll stop here. Is this verse meant as a form of meditation? That is upasana. Is the shloka is for upasana? No, it is knowledge. So Shankaracharya raises a, a question uh, in the form of an objection for the as from the as it is uh, uh, from the as, as though it has come from the Puru Pakshi and he answers it. That we will see in this class. Om Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Nad Pur Namadachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadhaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shantashantashanti shanti Hari Om Shri Guru Pyodha Hari Om Dhaniwadha